everyone, welcome to the Impulse RC YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the Impulse RC OSD again, and more specifically about the VTX options. So if you're familiar with this YouTube channel, you probably know that we've already done an introduction to our Impulse OSD. Um, and it was basically going through the whole menu and explaining the basic things you could do with our Impulse OSD. From now on, we're going to go a bit further into this series and we're going to um, detail a bit more every interesting section of the Impulse OSD. So today's section is going to be uh, about the VTX options. And um, before we start, I just wanted to mention that um, the video you're seeing right now is uh, being recorded through a DVR on my Google, so you see the live feed uh, coming from my drone camera and I simply bring up the OSD on my live feed by centering my sticks and going to the left. The reason why I do this to show you the Impulse OSD is because I don't have a Windows laptop or computer, I'm using a Mac, and that's the only way for me to access the Impulse OSD. However, if you're a Windows user, you can access the OSD um, through a software. So I will put a link in the description and uh, you should be able to access it um, as long as uh, you're using a Windows device. So now that I've mentioned this, um, I'm just going to go through the my DVR as we're speaking and um, I'm going to detail every option in the VTX section. So let's get started. So we are now in the VTX uh, menu and the first few options that we can see here are pretty much what you usually change uh, by pressing buttons manually on your VTX, except that uh, with the Impulse OSD, you can do it on the field by bringing it up on your feed. And as usual, you know, you can change the power uh, you want when your quad is disarmed, um, the power when it's armed, obviously, um, and then you can change your band and your channel uh, in case you just want to quickly switch without having to open um, your drone or um, opening your computer. That's, you know, pretty standard, but super useful when you have to do last minute changes. I use it a lot uh, when I fly with my friends and I'm super happy it exists in the Impulse OSD. Now we're gonna go actually in the very interesting sections, which is called the advanced um, section of the VTX menu. And the first thing you can see in there is the pit boot option. So um, if we enter it, the pit boot option is pretty much a combination of a couple of values that you can change and it simply works just like pit mode. So some people have their drone set up as a pit mode before being armed um, and uh, when they arm uh, pit mode uh, is cancelled and then they go to full power of the VTX. You can also have the pit mode uh, activated when you are at a race for example and you need to do some changes um, on your drone uh, while it's powered on and you don't want to blast your power while other people are actually flying and racing. So this is when you use pit mode if you didn't really know what it is. And the pit boot option is there to for you to assign an auxiliary channel and a range on your controller, so a position of the switch, um, you're going to activate to exit pit mode. So that's pretty much what it is. And as you can see, you also have the option uh, GPS home boot. Um, after plugging your battery, you usually have to wait a bit while um, you know your GPS has found enough satellites for you to be able to start flying. So while you are waiting for this to happen, uh, you pretty much want your VTX to stay nice and cool and only exit pit boot once the Impulse OSD has found the home position. So the GPS home boot does this for you. It tells the VTX to exit pit boot once the home position is found and then you can go. So that's all we have, you know, in this uh, VTX speed boot menu. So if we go back to um, the advanced menu, we can access the tramp wand option. So that's only useful for tramp users, the people who have a VTX called the, the Immersion RC tramp. This section pretty much override you know what you usually do with your with your uh, wand it disable um the the arm disarm um power switching of your vtx but if you don't have you know a tramp as a vtx this option doesn't do anything for you but if you do have one and you have um, specific questions about this this section feel free to um, ask in the comments and we'll be happy to answer you so now going back to um, the advanced menu so we are now talking about high power channel and high power range. What um, this high power channel and high power range does is giving you an option to change the switch um, with which you're going to activate this high power function of your VTX. So instead of having the arming switch doing these two functions, now you can arm and then later on you can uh, activate your high power 
um, from your VTX. And in relation to um, the high power channel and high power range options that you can see, there's also the VTX max power that you can either leave on auto or that you can tweak as well uh, by putting a value. Now we're going to uh, have a look at an option that I really like because I believe that it can definitely save um, your drone uh, after a crash. So this is called the beacon mode. And if you turn it on, pretty much what happens is you're out flying and you crash. And you're crashing not, you know, like um, 10 meters away, but like very far away or in a very inconvenient place where you lose your signal. So you have to walk a little bit, but you have no idea where your drone is. But at this point, what you really don't want to happen is your VTX to stay on high power and start overheating and overheating your whole drone. Um, it's not good for your equipment and also it's going to use your battery way too fast and the chance that um, you're going to run out of battery before you actually find your drone is very high. So you really, really don't want this to happen. It's actually the same uh, if you have LEDs on your drone, but we'll talk about this in a minute. First beacon mode for your VTX will start cycling your VTX between two status. The first status or mode of your VTX will last for one minute. And during this one minute, your VTX will stay at its lower power. For example, it's there's a high chance this is going to be 25 milliwatts. What is good with 25 milliwatts is it, it's not really overheating that much and it doesn't require that many amps um, from your battery to stay on this 25 milliwatts. So it's going to stay like this for one minute and then for 15 seconds, it's going to blast its signal at the highest power. So 800 milliwatt, for example, you know, like a very, very high power so that while you're getting closer to it, you should be able to either have some visual again in your goggles um, you should be able to analyze the strength of the, the video signal and choose, you know, which direction you should go um, and walk to retrieve your drone. So that's one cycle for your VTX. But the good thing about the beacon mode is that it also applies to LEDs if you have some on your drone. So if not only you're crashed far from yourself, but also, you know, it's getting late, it's getting dark. What will happen with your LEDs is, um, again, for one minute, they're going to be turned off. And then for 15 seconds, they're going to be full on. So you're going to, you should be able, you know, as you get closer to also have for 15 seconds, the ability to visually find your drone. And um, in addition to that, uh, that has nothing to do with impulse OSD, but you can add a beeper uh, on your drone. So your motors can uh, make some noise. So if you have beacon mode and that beeper set up on your drone, there's a high chance you're going to be able to retrieve your quad without struggling too much. All right, we're actually getting close to the end of this menu already. We just need now to talk about a quick things, which is called the VTX status. If you have a VTX uh, that gives you some feedback about its status, um, such as the temperature, I know the tramp we talked about earlier actually does that. You can see changes of temperature, changes in power or um, even change in frequency. Um, if you are in this section, um, there's an experiment that is not advised to do because it can kill your VTX. But if you remove the antenna from your tramp, for example, you should see the temperature going super high, which is not good. And the power, of course, uh, decreasing as um, your device is struggling, you know, to, to maintain its internal balance. Um, so don't do it. But that's what would happen if you were going to remove the, the video antenna from your VTX in that case. And um, yeah, that would give you a live feedback on how your VTX is dying. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you this is there because it was possible and if you ever need it, you know where it is. And that's pretty much, yeah, actually, that's completely, that's the end. We've done, we've said everything about the VTX advanced menu and the whole VTX uh, menu of this um, Impulse OSD. I hope it was clear enough, um, but if it wasn't, uh, feel free to ask some questions in the comments and the team or myself um, will do our best to answer you as soon as possible. This video was maybe um, talking about a lot of things that you already knew because it was mainly aimed you know, at beginners and intermediate pilots. But if you're more of an advanced pilot, there will also be more videos about you know, our graphical OSD, for example, that could be helpful for long range or cinematic uh, flying. And we'll give you a little bit more tips that could make your life easier by using the Impulse OSD. So stay tuned for the coming videos about this topic. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you learned at least a little thing. Uh, I hope I will see you in the next one. 
And in the meantime, keep pushing. See you everyone. Bye bye.